everybody, it's Video Bob, and uh, we're working on a Rolls Royce. Imagine that. Here at uh, American Bus Specialist, my buddy Christian, uh, he's one of the best bus diesel mechanics, probably in, in the world. He travels all over the country. You know, if a band breaks down somewhere, he will go to wherever they are and fix the coach because that's what you got to do sometimes. And he has a massive facility here, and he has these uh, pits, and he works on just about everything, and, and he knows, he just knows stuff. And so I brought the 04 Phantom to him because it had that oil leak um, it's had for like a year. It wasn't a serious oil leak, uh, but it was out of one of the oil cooler lines running to the alternator housing. And we're gonna take care of that. And also we had a leak with the water pump. You know, it's a 15 year old car with 80,000 miles. You're gonna have little leaks, but I really want this thing to be tight as a drum for the new owner. And uh, so we're getting all that taken care of. Okay, so this thing here, See that spot right there? That's this gasket. So this is the dual alternator housing. Holds the two alternators. And uh, you know, it's both liquid cooled and the oil runs through that bottom piece. And that's where the oil was leaking from. So I went down to BMW and got this little seal, which was about almost 20 bucks. So, Going through the car here, and we're gonna fix this water pump situation once and for all. It was leaking, and um, also gonna fix this oil leak so it'll be tight as a drum. Won't have any more leaky leaky. You can see these are the oil cooler lines. So this is a pretty common uh, leak on these cars also the valve covers, but you know, this is a 760 li series motor that's been modified for the rolls-royce just to be quieter Mostly all these baffles and things that you see but um, anyway We will be getting this taken care of Here's a peek at uh, one of the alternators Some of the hoses and things you have to be super careful with how you handle these hoses because they can become brittle and break easily and I was told I haven't confirmed this 100% but I was told that this fan motor is actually off of a Range Rover uh, from another Rolls-Royce owner who had to do some work so just make a note of that um, you know it's a Bosch but I was told that this maybe not the exact shroud but the fan itself luckily it's not a problem so just get it taken care of. This is a uh, Prevo bus, kind of like the one I just showed you. Uh, mine's a 1990. I think this one's a little bit later model. Looks like uh, he's doing some, some wheel work, some bearings or shocks or something. I'll have to ask him. Not sure exactly what he's doing, but uh, he works on everything here. I mean, it doesn't matter if it's a Rolls Royce or, or a bus. This guy, he, he knows how to fix anything. There it is, there's my boy Christian, American bus specialist. Let's see, we can... Uh, now what was you saying just a minute ago? That we don't need to take all this off in order to do that oil leak. So you can just find a way out and get it taken care of it, that's it, you know? I know, I mean, you, if, you, if you're a skilled you mechanic, you can get to this thing. I mean, it, because Rolls Royce or some of these other, you know, European auto shops, they want to take the whole front of the car apart. Book wants you to do all this other stuff, but if you actually know what you're doing, you can just get it out. Yeah, there it go. is on the ground. Why this thing has 280 amp alternators, I don't know. But it's got two batteries, two alternators. A B12. It's, it's got two of everything. That's why I have two Phantoms. That's right. You have to have a backup just in case. What do I do with my key? Here it is. I took a tumble last weekend. I was goofing around. Oh, ow. I was running around, running full force. And then I tripped and fell in the grass, hit the concrete. And uh, I think I broke a rib. I broke a McRib. 
So, turn this on, make sure the radio's down. Whew. Oh, air conditioning kicking in. That's what I'm talking about. So I've been moving slow the last couple days. Haven't been able to do the things I want. Like it's hard to breathe, hard to sit down. Had to, I, I'm pretty sure I cracked a lower rib or something. If you've ever done that, oh, it sucks. Oh, it sucks a lot. So we're getting the other rolls sorted. Uh, we're fixing that oil leak, water pump. Uh, everything on it is going to be nice and sorted. Still for sale. Uh, check the description here in the link uh, for the eBay auction if you want to buy the car. We have a set of factory Rolls-Royce wheels available uh, if you'd like to get those with the car. I don't want to sell them until the car is gone. Uh, they were recently powder coated and had all little chrome bits and they've got good year run flats on them, you know, real expensive tires. If you'd rather have that and, you know, I've talked about this extensively. Let me try to turn this fan down because it's kind of loud. I've talked about this extensively about, you know, the concept of using depreciation. If you were to go out and buy a 2004 same model year Rolls Royce that had 15 or 20,000 miles on it, you're going to pay a higher premium for the car because of the low miles. But that doesn't mean you're gonna get a better car because age alone, a lot of the BMW parts, these seals, these hoses, the, uh, these things, they just have a shelf life of age. They're gonna deteriorate because of age and not necessarily use. So you might go spend $120,000, let's say, on a lower mileage, same year Phantom, and then still have to do all the same repairs. So the fact that this car has 80,000 miles on it, that one for sale, don't let that scare you because we've replaced all the stuff that matters. And I'd rather have a higher mileage car with all new suspension, brakes, seals, all of those things tidied than to have a lower mileage car that's gonna need all that stuff again. So you can't, you can't get out of it because the other thing about it is by buying this car for less money, you're ahead of that depreciation game that I talked about in my previous video. That's the important key because you're gonna to get to use the car and then when you get rid of it, you're not gonna take such a large hit. And that's the trick. Now, I had a couple of problems with that other car. You know, I have two Phantoms and I had the both Phantoms getting inspected and getting the oil change, you know, or not the oil change, but getting uh, some things done to them, getting some computer work done. And the guy at the inspection place mistakenly took the mileage from this car, which was like 61,000 miles, and put it on that other car when he did the inspection. So the Carfax now shows a rolled back odometer. And I've been contacting Carfax trying to get them to fix this because he entered it into the computer. He was a dealer or whatever. And so he mixed the two Phantoms up the mileage, right? So, um, once it's entered, I don't know how you get it fixed. So if anybody works for Carfax, knows how to help me with the situation, please make a mention in the comments because uh, that is causing a problem. The other thing is, is it was reported as having an accident. Now we do know, remember last year, dude dented the door and uh, we replaced the entire door. There was no structural damage to the car. It's very well documented. I have the door. You can see it's just a little crease, but we ended up repainting the whole car because it's a metallic paint, metallic silver paint. And if we had just painted the door by itself, we all know it wouldn't have matched. You have to lay silver down a certain way, right? So we paint matched the original color paint and did the silver factory paint, uh, which is a bit of a metallic. We painted the whole car and then I added the black diamond tricoat to the top. Ended up spending about 12, it was almost 15,000 bucks by the time I got through with all of it. Um, so the car's got fresh paint and all these other things. But if you don't know the story and you look on the Carfax and it goes, oh, it's got an accident, it's got some mileage discrepancy, oh man, it's giving me hell. So if anybody's actually interested in the car, contact me directly and we'll talk to you about the car. Um, I've got it listed for, uh, I think like 80 grand or something. I would consider trading it for a Testarossa or maybe, a, maybe even a California uh, or towards uh, an FF. So I've been thinking about getting a Ferrari. Haven't decided if I'm gonna get one or not. Um, 
but hey, the thought crossed my mind. So anyway, all right. Hey, that's enough of an update for today. I'll follow up with you on this other stuff. Just stay tuned. Hey, if this is your first time checking out the channel, make sure to subscribe, like, share, all that kind of stuff. Hey, watch it again. Get those views up. Oh, I can't laugh. My poor ribs. Oh, you know, ribs sounds pretty good right about now. Let's go get some ribs. Hey, everybody, I'm video above. <laughs> <laughs>